welcome to the Utah Puck Report. Uh, season six, finally, we get some Weber State guys in here. Uh, I obviously I'm a little bit biased since I kind of helped uh, start the team and uh, get it going. Uh, Brian and Willie Fobert, William Fobert. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're an adult now, so yeah, we yeah. call you Will. Yeah, Will. Coach Will. Maybe Bill. Whatever. Bill. You oh, big bad <laughs> Bill. Uh, the Fobert brothers. Uh, one former player, current assistant coach. Is that, are you an assistant yeah. coach? Yeah, one of the two. One of the two. <laughs> uh, who is you and who else are? Uh, Jonathan Cosman. Okay, and Brian, you're the captain of the team this year. Yep, yeah, nice captain, president of the the team as well. Are you the president? Oh, absolutely. No, I was the first president. <laughs> well, there we go. We're just keeping it going. Man. It was terrible. You go you Murray High, Weber State. Just, just makes sense, apparently. Nice. <laughs> Uh, we actually played juniors in the same junior league, too. Yes, we did. Nice. All right, so let's get <laughs> into that path. a little bit. We'll we'll talk about it. Uh, Willie, let's talk about you. William, let's talk about you a little bit first. <laughs> I'm still just going to call you Willie. Yeah, that's fine. So much better. <clears throat> All right, so talk about growing up. Uh, let's let's Before we start talking about Weber State, I want to talk about mm-hmm. like how you got to Weber State. So where did you first play hockey? What's your first hockey memory? Um, first hockey memory, I guess you'd call it a hockey memory. I... What, went to public skate at like the Acord Ice Center in West Valley. And my dad looked at a flyer one day and he's like, Hey, you want to try hockey? I was like, Sure, dad, whatever you want. <laughs> really? <laughs> and then after that, just started playing hockey out of nowhere and just lit fire and just kept on playing it. That's, That's crazy. kind of how it started. I kind of thought your dad was like a big hockey guy. He. No, nah, he knew nothing about it. He uh, said he told us he used <laughs> to skate in the gutters of Wisconsin yeah. growing up. <laughs> he did, he did coach my. I think, uh, what was it, Bantam and Pee Wee teams somehow. Yeah. Didn't have any hockey experience, but he was out there. Well, he seemed knowledgeable. Like, he had me fooled. I thought he knew what he was talking about, so that's interesting. He just learned from Willie and then brought it back to, like, my age group. Nice. Uh, Same idea. What's the age difference between you guys? Uh, Four years. Okay. Almost exactly. Yeah. All right. So, all right, you first you started playing, uh, you played, like, just house league, and then when did you start getting into yeah. travel, and when did you start, like, realizing that you're probably decent at hockey? Yeah, decent. Decent Al- enough. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost Almost decent. decent. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> no, I I played from, was it, all the way to Pee Wee's, which is, like, U12 nowadays, and then after my last year of 12U, I think it was at the County Ice Center, like, the whole time, then I uh, joined the whatever the, the Renegades, yeah. if you remember what they are, was the Utah AAA team here. And I think that was like my first year, like 14U, Bantams, started playing there. Um, was it, I think I played there for three years probably. I did like a 14U, a 16U year, and then I skipped a year and went to 18U, and then blew out my knee. Didn't play for a whole year, and then decided I still loved it and kept on playing. Went to the Golden Eagles for my last two years of, like, rec hockey, technically. Yeah. Played there for, till what, 2013? And then, obviously, at Murray High as well. <laughs> and then... Spartans. Yeah. Spartans, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, my old coach, Mike Adamak, uh, he got me a connection with his brother who coached, coached a junior team in Gillette, Wyoming. And then got my first little stint in juniors up there for one year. And then after that, I decided I wanted to try to make a make a little jump to another league, hopefully. And his brother put me in a connection with his buddy in Minnesota, in like north, north Minnesota, like an hour north of Duluth, called Hoyt Lakes. So I played for the Minnesota Iron Rangers in the SIJHL for one year. And then eventually uh, made my way back to Weaver, came back home and didn't want to play D3. It was just expensive route didn't think it was worth it anymore and my old buddy Cody Bowen who I played with growing up like my whole life basically yeah yeah, he uh he played at Weaver for a year and he called me like all summer long trying to get me to come over there and I was like I don't know man (laughs) might just go go get some credits at Salt Lake Community College and then maybe see where (laughs) I go from there but then he finally convinced me like two weeks before school started I was like you know what I'll just go so out of nowhere moved up there started playing Started loving it and just stayed there the whole time. Yeah. Still haven't left. Still been in Ogden for like <laughs> nine years now. Yeah, you're gonna put you're gonna give Yosh a run for his money. <laughs> yeah, he's he's only been there so. for thirty years. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. 
Uh, so Brian, kind of similar story for you. You you yeah. see Willie growing up playing hockey, and you're like, I want to do what my brother's doing, and yeah, basically, I think it started with like roller hockey in the in the kitchen or something. Okay, that's what I heard. I don't really remember this, but <laughs> Willie was playing, so I just copied, and then you know went along a pretty similar path overall. Except I I got to leave my U18 year. I went and played in Colorado, so I I tried to make that jump from Utah AAA. I went up to Colorado play for the Rampage out there. Yeah, the parents learned a little yeah, bit yeah. from my experiences. Yeah, right. Willie was the trial run, so I got a better experience, <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, it's funny because if your parents don't know, and if they're from Utah, they don't know the path. No. Like, yeah, we're going to, the, the Mannix are going to be on next week, and we're going to talk about the path because mm-hmm. it's different for all of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so we, much different than like all the other sports, too. It's yeah. like all over the place. And you, I talk to youth parents all the time because I coach at the Oval. And they have no idea. They think, like, if you make it to high school for a little bit, like, that's a good call, and you're probably no, going to make it, no. like, the rest of the sports. And That's the thing, though. Right? It's, like, the same as all all sports. That's the goal is make the varsity team and then get scouted from there where hockey just not that way unless no. you're in Minnesota. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's about it. Minnesota. Uh, Maybe Boston Massachusetts area. sounds yeah. really good. Yeah. And, and then that whole uh, prep league that's, right. you know, basically the, it, that includes New Hampshire too, right? But, yeah, all that New England area. Yeah, people yeah. just don't get it. They start talking about hockey. It's, it's the same with soccer. You start talking about high school, and you and I'm I'm not trying to bash on <laughs> high school hockey here because I'm I'm writing an article as we speak. <laughs> I was sitting at my desk a minute ago trying so hard to write an article. I almost turned on my computer. <laughs> um, we, if, if you're listening and, and you're trying to get your kid the right way, the goal is not high school hockey. Like most of our guys will tell you that if you end up playing high school hockey here, then you've probably screwed up your career and you're not going to get out of here uh Man. you know daniel brickley would be one of the few exceptions that played high school hockey here and still had a chance to get out um mm-hmm. that being said some of my my fondest memories my well i started high, with high school hockey i didn't play any hockey till i played for murray <laughs> that was my first team ever i had never I mean, I started skating in ninth grade because I knew I was going to play at Murray High. My, the first time I ever... They allowed you on the I team, did not too? Even know. Yeah, well, <laughs> I yeah. definitely thought you were playing... Nope. Like, I saw Tegan when we were kids, like, playing all the time. Oh, I yeah. That's how you were. Well, no, I... Uh, well, that's the thing, right? We learn... I had to learn through my own mistakes, but my... The first time I ever played hockey was my sophomore year at Murray High. And, by, and they sent me to a camp. I got to go with Paul Skidmore, who was a guest on this show. Paul Skidmore... I was on the ice with him for three hours before the start of my sophomore year at Murray High, and he kind of taught me how to be a goalie. And by midseason, I was the starter, and our head coach was like, this isn't going to (laughs) work. He sent me to an eye doctor where I found out I needed glasses, and then he sent me to Minnesota and said, go to Minnesota and go to this hockey camp. And then they said, hey, you could stay here and play on our hockey team if you'll play baseball for us because you come from Murray, which has really good baseball. I'm like, I can barely make the team <laughs> for Murray High Baseball, but I was really good in Minnesota. So I stayed at Shattuck St. Mary's. That's that's how I ended up there. I stayed there one year, and then that Jeez. same coach paid for me to go. The well, Murray, nice the Murray High coach paid my tuition at Shattuck, and then I came back, and that's I was decent at that point. <laughs> you go from practicing once a week to practicing every day, like you had, we had nine teams, right? So we got to condition, we and then like, oh, our goalie's not going to dress. Why don't dress the dress Jay again? So I just got to be on the ice all <laughs> the time. Good reps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how I learned. And we had goalie coaches. We had two goalie coaches. Unheard of. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's better than most. Not happening here anytime here, soon. Least, yeah, so it's just a really lucky thing. So uh, that's my little story. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so Brian, yeah, first time Tegan goes out to play hockey. My son, you're there too, like yeah, the little we, sharks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we grew up playing against each other. Yep. I hated Tegan for a long time, until <laughs> I really got to know him because he was good. He was also that offhand goalie, which yeah. messed with our young minds, I would say. Yeah, the full <laughs> Trying right. to shoot yep. blocker, and it was a glove. So not that I could really aim then, but still, yeah. still it was in your head. But yeah, no, now, I mean, we've been buddies ever since, really. I yeah. be at your house when I was like pff, five, six with like Evan and – <laughs> all, all those guys playing shinny hockey in the basement so it's been pretty cool yeah Good it's stories. funny because we talked about we moved out of that house a few years ago and i was like there was just so much stuff you guys would put holes in the wall and yeah. 
or run up the <laughs> run up the stairwell and break the banister. We're like, oh, I think that was we, Cody Grant. Yeah, Cody <laughs> Grant. We tried to fix all that stuff for a while, and I'm like, I just can't keep up with it. Just let them break everything. We'll start over. I don't remember we had the. Those fluorescent lights too, and there were puck holes in every light that we had I downstairs. The lights for sure, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so then you, same thing. You grow up, you get out, you're, you're playing in Colorado for a bit, and then you end up in the Manitoba League. Yeah, how'd that happen? And we're, tell, tell us a little bit about your Manitoba um, experience. So, well, how I got there was I met a guy, uh, Carl Bombardier. He played on the U for their team for a couple of years at least, and uh, I actually met him at a drop. And when I came back for Christmas break. And he just told me, you know, I played up here. It's called OCN, Opasquia Cree Nation, which is up in Manitoba, uh-huh. like seven hours north of Winnipeg. And he's like, you know, if consider it, look into it. So I did. And when it came to the end of the year, I wasn't really sure yet if I wanted to keep playing hockey or if I wanted to, you know, just go to school or something. Because a lot of my buddies, like, you know, I'm like Jake and Aaron and all those guys, they were all going to school. So it was like a little bit of pressure, but I decided, yeah, I'm going to go up go see what it's about and me and my mom drove up 24 hours to get there yeah and that was without even knowing if i was going to be on the team or not i was just you know fully commit went up there had a good training camp and main camp all that stuff made it to exhibitions and i made the team uh played there my first year up in the reservation up there which was definitely a different vibe than being in utah it was like a town of i don't know i think they say fifteen thousand, but it was maybe more like five. It was so small and so cold. I wrecked my car a couple times, almost got hit by a snow plow, but I mean, it was one of the best times of my life. I, I loved it up there. It was so much fun. Just maybe being away from home and in Canada when you're 18 you're, or 19, you're basically, you can do whatever you want. So yeah, especially, go to the yeah, bars and experience everything, gamble. Yeah. You're a full and, adult there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially on the reservation. U- yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> especially coming from Utah where you you don't really get a lot of that experience too young. Yep. So that was cool. Changed changed my life a bit, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> you grew up quick. Yeah, I grew up a, fast. Yeah. But uh, then after that first year, my coach, Doug Headley, he was, I guess his contract was up, and he ended up going down to the Dauphin Kings, which is in the same league. And I got traded there to play for him again. And then my last year in juniors, my 20 year, played there. Had a good season, and uh, yeah, I mean, I loved it there too. My my billets everywhere were awesome. I still keep in touch with them, and you know, it's just such a cool culture. Like, yeah, up there, hockey is hockey's life. I mean, everybody's playing it. You go out, people freeze their backyards all the time. I mean, it's like negative seventy, so you can <laughs> you can just throw water out there and you'll be fine. I try to so. explain it to people, like the difference uh, for for me, for real, like coming out of Salt Lake and I had agreed to play for, like I was trying to go NCAA and I had the chance to go play junior college in North Dakota. And they're like, hey, while you're here, we put you in the Manitoba Junior League too. So you'll get junior college games. You'll also get double or triple the amount of games if we send you up to the Manitoba League. So I, I was with the Surus Elks for a while and then the Brandon Stingers in the same league. Okay. And the Brandon Steegers played on the same arena as the Brandon Wheat Kings of the W. So it was pretty cool to be up there and all of a sudden be in that culture and to see it, see how different it is. And I tried it, and I would go and I'd get the missionaries, like the LDS missionaries. <laughs> and I'd be like, why don't you guys come? And like my girlfriend and I will cook you dinner. Uh, we'll make some dessert and then we'll take you uh, to a game or maybe to the, the casino. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <you know> what <laughs> what yeah. So it probably wasn't like we were the best influences, but we we're just trying to, you know, make everybody feel welcome. But it, nobody really understood what I was talking about until Letterkenny came out. Oh, <laughs> and no, then when man. they then when they're like, oh, yeah. is this what you're talking about? Like when they talk about playing the reservation teams, because a lot of times <laughs> you play the reservation. We had a kid named Dodie Wood coming off the mm-hmm. reservation who was like mean. <laughs> mean. Oh, yeah. And he ended up being a second round draft pick from the San Jose Sharks because he could fight anybody. <laughs> And he did really well for himself. Yeah. But, uh, and that was one of the first ones out of the, the uh, Manitoba reservations that made it to the NHL. Uh, there's a few Jesus. since then, but pretty crazy. Like to think about the difference in culture to go from <laughs> Murray, Utah <laughs> to a reservation in Canada. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's... Re- reservations are wild. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, they were like, what was it? They're throwing fish at your games yeah, all the time. Yeah. Right? They'd throw anything they could as long as they didn't get in trouble. I mean, yeah. 
And I don't know if you had this, but when I was playing, they hated the fact that I was American. And so they would throw uh, marshmallows behind me in the crease. Oh, really? (laughs) Hoping that I would just step on one and blow out my knee or my groin. Because if you step on a marshmallow on the ice, you just go down immediately. It's crazy. I had no idea. I've never seen it. I had never. I I hadn't heard about it before or since. But you don't hear them land either. So you're playing playing a game and like all of a sudden – you lose an edge. And I couldn't skate anyway, so I was like, oh, I fell down Start again. Start stuffing, my, oh, look, stuffing my gloves full of marshmallows yeah, and dropping them behind there's me. There's snacks on the ice. That's cool. <laughs> um, all right, so now let's talk about you guys get to Weber State. Did you guys get the opportunity to play together for a couple of years, right? One year. One. <clears throat> Only one. Like Only you, one. All right, I give you crap because you were there. <laughs> you I had, was there for technically seven years, but I so played for doctor. five. So you're a doctor. Yeah, I'm a doctor. Exactly. <laughs> you blew out your knee. Blew my knee like my second year. Yeah. So I didn't play then. And then we had COVID year, so I didn't play then either. Okay. And then you get five years in the ACHA level. Right. So. And that's cool. Yeah. I, I like that you get to do that. Um, I know I was giving you grief, but that's just no, because we're like, good. like, whatever. You're all the time, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but Ready it's. Joke. Yeah. I'm sure everybody gives it to you. But I also, I mean, because I played junior college and then I, then I came back, I still played uh, four years at Weber. So I, I got way more college hockey. I should at least be a doctor, if, you know. Um, but it, that's what's good about it is that I don't think I would have kept going to school if I didn't get to keep playing hockey. And because of it, I have, you know, I have Fair. degrees and I have it. I'm a paramedic because I kept going to school <laughs> and they're like, well, you got to pick something. I'm like, ah, yeah, I can't just keep taking the same class. Well, yeah. Like I, I enjoy oh. the criminal justice classes. I got a degree in that. And they're like, okay, now you're done. Go be a cop. I'm like, oh, I didn't want I didn't want that. <laughs> so it, it, I think that's, that's yeah. one of the good things about it is that the ACHA. And like you mentioned that we talked about it last week. Uh, we had uh, the women's coach on from the U last week. Um, mm-hmm. Or maybe it was Adam Mack. We were talking about it with somebody. I always look to Madison. Usually Josh fills me in on stuff. <laughs> um, Madison's our producer, and I, I'm always lost. With that. So my <laughs> producers usually help me out. A um, couple weeks ago, we had somebody in, and we were talking about the difference. Like we, The NCAA Division Three is expensive. Not very many scholarships. Not, like, not schools that you've heard of. Yeah. very often and it's kind of like those Maybe. tiny towns too you like yeah. it's like 5000 people in your town generally yeah. and mo- a lot of it's the college and it's ex- yeah. so you're looking 30 50 70 grand to go to school per year oh yeah and right. they're like hey we're going to we're we're going to pay for your books <laughs> they're like yeah thanks. that's great thanks it's <laughs> huge so the ACHA really comes into play when guys are like, man, I, I want to keep playing, but I can't afford to go to a school like that. And then you look at Weber, and man, I know, again, I'm biased. <laughs> I'm biased, but I absolutely love my time at Weber. I absolutely love living in Ogden. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, coming from Salt Lake, you never hear great things about Ogden. Right. It sounds like yeah. it's like, I don't know, some sketchy ghetto area when really, <laughs> you know, you get up there, it's no different than here. Right. You well, just, I think it's a lot better than here. Like, I think yeah. it's top secret, one of the best places to live because the restaurants that are there, like the mom and pop shops, you go to Ligori's, you go to whatever, yeah. like all those things that are right there. And then I thought the school was phenomenal. And then you've got that amazing rink, thanks to the Olympics, right yeah. on campus. That's yeah. so lucky. The on-campus part's big. Yeah. Everybody Huge. loves it. Like a lot of people that like come to Weber from out of, con- or out of state and even out of country sometimes, like they'll see the facility and like, they're like, oh, I want to go now. Yeah. They'll see the crowds too, and like, compared to a lot of other schools, like a lot of people don't get crowds or anything, and right. like, that's a big draw for a lot of recruits. Yeah, I yeah, mean, from definitely. year from year one, we started selling that building out. Yeah. yeah, and then it was kind of weird because we shared it with Utah State for the first few seasons, which is kind of how the rivalry developed too. Because okay, you know that was their home ring too. <laughs> I didn't know that at all. Yeah, Bush has never mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they mentioned you guys sold out all the time. But yeah, that, that was just, that was just the rivalry part. They never we, mentioned you guys played in the same rink. Yeah, that's that was like my introduction to marketing was trying to sell out that building and try to <laughs> yeah. go out and get money. And, like, I remember in the middle of a game one time going to the coach and being like, hey, they're running the wrong ads on the, <laughs> yeah. on the, on the bill. We're like, we sold this out. We got to – we got to – Like, Jay, get back step, in the net. Yeah. We got to step no, up. No, no, no. My, my coach at the time, a guy named Sean Thorson, who was a phenomenal player from here. We, I got to get him on the show. And he doesn't get enough credit for what he did at, at Weber State because he's the one that started the program there. He's the one that went out and did all the recruiting to get players there. 
he guilt tripped me. I was fine in North Dakota. I get a phone call from Sean Thorson saying, Hey, you need to come back home and you need to come play here. We're, we're making college hockey in Utah now. So we need all of our Utah players to come back. And I was like, all right, <laughs> but I mean, I he made so. it work. He made it, he, and he got Smith's to pay for my tuition. Like I had a full ride scholarship from Smith's to go to Weber state. Well, that's nice. Yeah. It doesn't happen Damn. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have heard of that? I think you guys do. Yeah, there are some while. tuition waivers or whatever you yeah, guys get. There is. Yeah. So, all right, that's how it was then. Let's talk about yeah. how it is now. Well, we don't need uh, what's it called? <clears throat> Didn't you guys? You guys had like a faculty person that had to like back your club, right? Yeah. I think it was Roy Van Orman. Roy, Roy Van Orman. Yeah. Who? We I think we honored at the beginning of the season. Yeah, he passed away. Yeah, he passed. At the beginning of the year. That was horrible because he. You're right. We had mm-hmm. to have him. We had to have a faculty advisor on staff in order to have the team, and he was phenomenal for us. He was such a good person to have around, and he was yeah. like he wasn't just doing it. He he was there and he helped us and he made sure, like not only were we playing hockey, but that we were getting good grades. And that was yeah. That, that probably well, he was that might help a little bit there from nowadays too. Too, so obviously. Right? No, yeah, he was so an anthropology, sure he was an anthropology he professor. Really yeah, and he was on top of all <laughs> cared of us. Cared about school. And, the, and yeah, good. we had guys like me that maybe just went to play hockey, and he's like, "No, you're here. Get a degree <laughs> and get good grades so that it looks good for the team, so the team stays here forever. Like, don't just come mm. here and play for a few years and ruin the program and leave with a, right. like a 1.2 GPA, <laughs> right? <laughs> like he's like." Do the right thing. And that was that's awesome to have somebody like that. So yeah, we had to have him and he yep. was phenomenal and rest in peace. We miss him. Yep. Oh yeah. No, he's uh what's it called? We don't need any of those anymore. Now we have like I think most schools have like a club sports like area. Faculty, faculty least, area. So okay. yeah, they manage all our stuff. But when it comes to grades, we don't have anybody pushing us for that. So that's mostly the coaching staff checking on all the guys, making sure they're well, on top of their stuff. Yeah. I noticed because, you know, I, I come to games or I watch your games online and, and I'll, I'll text you. I'm like, hey, wh- where's this guy? And he's like, oh, I didn't make grades. Yep. 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 Uh, so that sucks to lose a guy because he couldn't pull it. What is it? A 2.5 to play? I think it's uh, 2.0, but it's mainly so, you he, gotta, you, you're losing but, guys to a 2.0. <laughs> you got to pass nine credits as well. So, like, if you take nine credits and you only pass – seven you're still ineligible even if you had a yeah, you know, we, three five look, so these guys should be passing yeah classes, they should so. be that's for yeah. sure pretty much okay. three classes yeah yeah not even yeah. full schedule usually yeah. right. so you got to be taking 12 to get which to luckily get we schedule, haven't had but... too much of those issues lately okay. in the years past yeah. we used to have like five or six guys sometimes drop off where do but... you recruit from are you pulling guys right off the ogden mustangs now now that <laughs> yeah. now there's, well, a, now, now there's a big part of it because there was there was a hate the the former coach and owner of the Mustangs would not allow it for a long time, right? Wasn't a fan of it, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, they tried to push them other areas. Yeah, they I mean, not they want them. Even other ACHA yeah. teams, they were like. I think it's because the sponsor was like, this guy had a lot of money, like that backed the Mustangs team, also backed the Weber State team a little bit. Yeah. There was like a little bit of conflict there, and I so, remember when that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I tried. I tried to resolve that issue. Did you? Yeah. 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 Well, one guy apparently ruined it for everybody. So. Yeah, that's true. Yep. One guy stole stuff. Yeah, yeah. stole some stuff. And, 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 and they and but then other other people should have stepped up and owned it. Yeah, I was there for a lot yeah. of. The, I was coaching the Mustangs at that time. Oh, were you really? Oh, yep. that was. I remember that. Now, yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So oh, anyway, but. so. Now you can get some players from the Mustangs, which is great. Let them go out and scour yeah. the, the globe, literally. They have guys from all over the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then show them this amazing facility and be like, hey, while you're here, you know, five grand a year, you can go to this amazing <laughs> school. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's one of the top <laughs> three in the country. No, at least yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> top in the state, at least. But I mean, science. affordability-wise, definitely top. <laughs> top yeah. Probably top number there. one for affordability. <laughs> yeah, that, that does help a lot of kids kind of decide to come here, too. Like, Oh, 100%. And you have a couple schools charging fifteen thousand a year for tuition, whatever, and then like we're sitting at five. If you're in state, you're like probably three thousand. Yeah, amazing semester. Such so like easy that, decision, really. Yeah, that's a big pull. Our rink's a big pull. The fact that we get fans is a big pull, and then a lot of it lately has been, yeah, the Mustang guys. We probably have what do we got? Like nine Mustang guys on our team now. Yeah, basically all. You got their best goalie last from year. last year, right? Yeah, we got yeah, their two years. Yeah, Yancey, oh, you got them both. Yep. Owen Yancey and Trey Hirschfield. They were on the team last year. Yep. Both played great, and now they're at Weber. Nice. 
So well, that's cool. That's so nice. Yeah, you know that. And then what was it? I think we get a lot of a lot of people through our website. They're like, so guys will be from whatever Canada, Chicago, Arizona, wherever. Okay, so let's talk about. You've got these players now, and this has been a great year for you guys. I've came, I get frustrated sometimes because I'll come and I'll be like, "All right, you guys, um, <laughs> you you're in these games, and then you'll get stupid penalties, or so it's it's a discipline issue." And I'll yell at Yosh. I'm like, "Freaking make those kids, make those kids do something. To get the discipline going." This year, you guys have really brought it together. I I mean, I don't know necessarily from the coaching standpoint, but I would say a lot of like guys who have left personality wise, that's a okay. big change that we have a lot of guys that either, I, I, I don't know if I would say thought they were too good or like have that mindset where it's like, Oh, it's ACHA, it's club hockey. I can do what I want type yeah. of deal. And we've lost quite a few of those guys and brought in guys that's, you know, believe, know, believe in playing like a team. Yeah. They like hockey. They still want to be playing. They care, they compete. And so they, they know, you know, doing stupid stuff like that is going to, hurt the team so that's definitely brought it down nice quite a bit just and, the, the mindset i think and you were gone for a bit at the beginning of the season and yeah. there and i think somebody else was hurt but now you guys like the last 15 games you've lost what two maybe and you guys have just yeah, been something like that on fire you went to that tournament um you this yeah, is the weird part colorado, too is that you, yeah right? you guys play the colorado yeah. tournament we didn't have these in state or or in season like tournaments. Showcase things. Yes, yeah. that's very cool because you can get a lot of games played. But it's so it's almost like European soccer trying to keep up with you guys. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. like oh they're in a tournament and, I, and I'll write an article and I'll be like oh great they got this great tournament going on and then all of a sudden the next week they're like they're in another tournament. I'm like what? <laughs> but it's yeah. cool because you get a lot of games played and that does help cut down on the budget too. Yeah, like that's if probably you, the definitely. best part about it. You get like 16 teams in one area. Yeah. You get to you play four all. games. Yeah, yeah, like Michigan State's team was there. We had Bowling Green that we played all the way from Ohio. Texas A&M. Yeah. Like that's, teams from all over. Yeah, that's awesome. And so, you guys swept it. Like the, Yeah, we had a really good showing that weekend for sure. It was, a, yeah, I think our best weekend there, at least Yosh said, our best weekend there that he can remember. So, yeah. Pretty well, solid. And being able to see some of the games and, and watch you guys play, I was like, man, they're really bringing it together. Yeah. And then you watch you start climbing up the rankings too. And, you know, I talked to Yosh and he's like, we have, if we, if we can get ranked number two, and this is what we're going to, this is why you guys are here to talk yeah. today. <laughs> if we can get them that, that number two ranking, then we get an automatic bid to nationals. And you guys got yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that was the goal from the start of the year. But, with Yo, she's big numbers guy, so he he reminded us every week how close yeah. we are, <laughs> yeah. how far we are, keeping track of all the stats because like the rankings are pretty wild. Well, like, yeah, it's not just like win losses like in juniors, as you know. It's right. it's a lot to do with strength of schedule, goal differential. Uh, you know, what else is there? There's a couple other things. Goals against. Yeah, there's goals like five for. factors in there. Those are the main ones though. Then the computer puts it all together. Okay. So like, for instance, we. We play Montana State, who I think they were like 33 and two or three. And just by playing them, that brings our strength of schedule up. Yeah. Regardless. So, like, you can lose that game and still move up because the computer looks at it like you played right, somebody hard. Somebody right. Really yeah. good. Yeah. And if you have like a pretty weak schedule through the year, you're, you're basically yeah. not going to make it anywhere. So, I kind of owe a lot to Yosh about figuring that all out and scheduling us good teams all year long. Yeah. 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 That's all he gets. Still perform That's all he gets. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get him on the show because I, I really, I've been bugging. Well, I was yeah, bugging Brian and Yosh. Awesome had a little while. text going with both of them. I'm like, I need you guys both to come out and be on the show. And he's busy. I mean, the guy's yeah. raising a family, he has a job, you know, <laughs> like he has to sell houses. And then yeah. he also, and he volunteers a ton. Like he's, helping with a tournament this week that yes, you guys aren't even involved in. And then he's yeah. coaching you guys, which is like a full-time job too, or oh, at yeah. least a, a very part-time job, <laughs> yeah, 30 man. hours a week, you I know, would say. working, waking up in the morning is probably the worst part about it. Yeah. yeah. So but, practices, practices. But <laughs> just wait till you get older. Then you're just already you're up just, in the morning. Ready yeah. to go. Yeah. I was going to say, he only sleeps you, like five hours a night when so. you're playing. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah, it looks like you have all this discipline because you're just you're just up in the morning. Yeah, exactly. People um, respect that. So now you guys are going to nationals. Where are nationals this year? Um, St. Louis, yeah. Missouri. Oh, yeah. that's funny because 
uh, like the second year I played at Weber, we played Nationals in St. Louis. Must be a and they're the hot spot central, I the, guess. I don't know the Bellicans or whatever. The oh, it's, <laughs> I have no Bellicans. idea, but it's it's different now. There's like Lindenwood and who else? Maryville. Yeah, there's only a couple two I teams know. around that area, but okay. not quite like downtown St. Louis, a little bit outside. But yeah, but the Blues have like a really nice practice facility with like three yeah. rinks there, all in the the exact same area, <clears throat> and so they're gonna do nationals there for the next like five years. They decided. Oh, cool! Just I mean, because it's, it's worth central it. until we get ours built here. Yeah, until yeah, exactly. we get our nicer version. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Could be cool out there. Yeah. <laughs> so, be. what are you guys expecting? To ha- you guys have a games left, right? Are you done till nationals? Done. Done, done till nationals. Now. And you've got Utah State who's playing this weekend. Yep. And they basically have to win this tournament to go, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you got to finish. Regionals. Yeah. Regionals. You got to make it. You got to win every game in regionals to get to nationals. So you got to finish third or fourth. Um, There's two spots in, open to make nationals. Yeah. Okay. Regionals. So like Montana State was one. We're two. And then those last two spots would be three and four. And then. So if you there's not like a championship game per se in regionals, but there's two final games okay. to, to go. All right. So um, how do, what are you guys expecting? Are you do you know the other teams that are in mostly already, and are they teams you've played so far, or are they teams you know about? Mm, the teams in our division or our pool, there's four pools, and then we'll have four teams in each pool. So we have Northeastern is the only team we know that's going to be in our pool so far because it's like regionals weekend. Okay. So and once Mont- regionals is over, then they'll have a Southwest team in and a Central team that joins our pool as whoever finishes third or fourth in their region. Okay. And then we'll know more about who we're playing. But the Northeast team, we don't know too much. We just know that we played the University of New Hampshire team this year who finished it like fourth, I'm pretty sure, in the, uh, in the East behind them. And, I mean, they beat that Northeastern team – and then eventually Northeastern just beat them a couple times. And we lost to New Hampshire like 2-1 to one in a pretty yeah. tight game. So we don't know exactly what to expect, but we do know that, was it, we played Lindenwood this year, and they're in it again because they, they've seemed to be a powerhouse lately, and they're all, they've been in the last like couple of years in a row. And they'll be in a different pool. But them, Liberty, and Florida Gulf Coast. I'm pretty sure Florida Gulf Coast. Yeah. FGCU. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. FGCU. Yeah. Those are like the big teams that everybody knows about. That's they tend to be in nationals every year. Okay. And so we'd like to see how we stack up against most of them. But I know that in the pool play, you have to win your pool to advance. And so you get three games in nationals for, I think we play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then if we do get enough to go past that, then we'll advance and play like the A pool or B pool. Yeah. But this is so. This has been one of the, if not the most successful seasons for Weber State, at least in the last last ten to twelve years, probably. Yeah. yeah. Like you guys are, you you have all the right pieces. You you mentioned your goaltending. Um, how many seniors? I, I saw your senior night thing. You're you're a senior. I am. Yeah, we got five all together. And Van Orman, we yeah, talked about Roy's. We talked grandson. about Roy, but it's his grandson. Yeah, I played cool. with both of his sons. Yeah, at Lane. the time, and now you I got Lane. you got Cole Van Scorman, right? Is that what you, yeah. That's what you call him. Yeah. So, but he's been lighting it up pretty good. Oh yeah, he's been unreal this year. We got another guy, Corey Mater, has been really good this year. Yeah, Mustangs guy. Mustangs guy. Nice. Uh, Andrew Alonzo. Uh, there's a guy we brought in, Kevin Norwood. He's from Boston area, and he's been quite that addition too. He's been it's been nice to have him for sure to keep that you know I would say depth of scoring because. Yeah. At least like our first well, my first year, Willie's I don't know, tenth year or whatever it was. <laughs> but, but uh when we were there, I mean it was really one line, did everything. Yeah. And that was like what was expected. So that changed probably this year more than anything, was that depth. You guys really have like a solid team this year and which is really hard to build in the ACHA, like in any hockey team. Like it's hard to build a four line team. And you guys are getting production from everywhere. The, the games I've seen, you, everybody's producing. Yeah. Uh, it was weird when you were gone. You were on your honeymoon or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. You went and got married, right? I did. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank That's you. awesome. Not a big deal. Pretty big deal. Pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest. <laughs> Um, but that's cool. Now everybody's back. Everybody's gelling. Are you going to be missing anybody for nationals because of injuries or grades or anything? Um, there's, well, three guys 
were ineligible because of grades. But other than that, everyone's good. I'm pretty sure. Don't got any injuries. We're it's probably our most healthy season. Yeah, it's oh, for nice. sure our most healthy season. Like every year, we usually have like two or three guys down for the rest of the year, like yeah. season ending injuries or something like that. I think the worst injury we've had this year was like somebody separated their AC joint like two weeks ago. Okay, but he's yeah. good. Yeah, it only takes two weeks to get back. Knock on wood, right? Yeah, knock, knock on, on wood. wood. wood but <laughs> it looks like it. It's, uh, it's wood like. <laughs> okay, good enough. Um, okay, so it's tough to get an entire team to St. Louis. Like, so what are you? You guys out uh-huh. pounding the pavement, getting some funds, getting some donations? What's uh, yeah? So, I mean, we started a fundraiser link that we have posted on our Instagram, and we got a a Facebook fans page that they posted it to. Uh, but what also happens, like, so since we're a club, we have to go to the school every year and request funding for our club. Mm-hmm. And so, for instance, like, if we make nationals or some tournament that is, like, league-sponsored, we can go back to the school, give them a presentation of why we need X amount of dollars, and then they will grant us that money or loan it, you could say. And then, depending on what they decide our presentation was like, if they liked it or if it was, you know, convincing, they can give us let's say like $15,000, just give it to us and we don't have to pay it back. Or they can give us $15,000 and we have to pay back, you know, like 10,000 of it back to club sports. So we were lucky enough that they gave us a good amount of money. And then we also, we only have to pay back about half of it. Okay. So through our, like Willie was saying, our, our ticket sales and all that, like our fans have been great this year. So that shouldn't take too long to pay back really because – but if some other fans are trying to help, you say we can go to Weber State. What? How do so, they find it? Weber State Instagram. Like, uh, how do yeah, we find this? If you know what the bio is on Instagram or where where to find that? Link in bio. Yeah, link in bio. <laughs> yeah. That's where we're going. Yeah, I've been suckered into a few yeah, of those. That's yeah. one. This one's legit. I promise. <laughs> okay. Well, so. I, I, yeah. I just end up <laughs> buying stuff. Like, yeah. But I know what you're know, talking you about. You don't have to buy anything. Just just give us money. Okay. That's all. <laughs> but, if, but but we are giving away three jerseys signed by the whole team. They're custom, unique jerseys that uh you know, the top three donors will get. Nice. So if you know if you want to give a lot of money, we'll give you one of those. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. That's but, very cool. So yeah, you'll find that link in the in our Instagram bio and then on our Facebook fans page, which I don't know if you have to be accepted to or not. You might have to be. Do you have does Weber State Hockey have just a website? We do, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So uh, if you're looking to donate, look look on that. Am I allowed to say that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get it in there because I'm not sure if the link's in there right now. All right. We'll we'll look and see and uh in post production, we'll put some links onto it or whatever we're allowed to do. And I know I can't do GoFundMe or whatever, but I can do other yeah. like I can help well, post other stuff, and perfect. we can try to help you guys raise some money. Because I'd love to see you guys go and be successful, and not yeah, for stress sure. out about the stuff, and not have to look at the, you know, in the middle of a game Make and look up and see you're running the ra- wrong yeah, yeah, yeah. or you know <laughs> that guy can't eat that much food. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's awesome to see how far the programs come. It's awesome to see. Uh, like the full progression here this, to see like, um, you know, you that grew up playing with my son, it, like Tegan had the option. He could have gone and played hockey at Weber State or he could have yeah, gone wherever. For sure. He picked soccer. We make fun of him every week. <laughs> every week on this show we make fun of him. You think we make fun of you for being at Weber for 10 years? <laughs> try, try living in Tegan's shoes because he's fair target because he works in here. And, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. probably around here enough. Everyone yeah. knows. So everyone knows and we make fun of him for being a soccer player. <laughs> Although there's a lot of soccer players in this building too, awesome. um, but anyway, all right. So cool. Is there anything else we should talk about, like that you want to want to promote, or any other ways we can help help out the Weber State team? Uh, what yeah, about somebody that's looking think. to play next season? They just jump on the website and fill out the little thing. Yeah, what, yeah. What are tryouts or camps? tryouts at the end of April every year? It's come our ID camps, and yeah. then yeah, you'll find like a recruitment form if you go to the WeberStateHockey.com. And then you can fill out your bio there and all your accolades and everything that you got and see if they'll email you back, whatever, if we think you're worthy of coming, basically. <laughs> now that we have wow. Essentially. Wow. Now that we have that option. Okay. Didn't yeah. always, it wasn't always I that mean, way. If, if you're a Russian student asking for money, we're probably not going to say yes. <laughs> but oh, yeah. we, right. we do get some of those. We've got some overseas guys asking. It's like, hey, any any uh, anything you got for me? Like, I really want to play college hockey, but I don't know if I can afford it. We're like, man, that's the wrong, yeah, wrong place to it. come to. We, we have a lot of people in Salt Lake that also want to play college hockey that can't afford it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> I get it's it. not cheap. 
Yeah. All right. Well, and that's one thing I think we should mention is that uh, because it's club and yeah. we're, we're talking about fundraising, you guys have to pay to play. Like yeah, yeah. you have to pay your tuition mm-hmm. and then you got to pay to play the games. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like this year was $2,000 for dues, which I don't know how that stacks up against a lot of teams, but I think we're probably like mid range, maybe on the lower end. Yeah. So if you're looking at going other places, it could be, I don't know, even like three four thousand dollars to play yeah um luckily our coaches are volunteers mm. so we don't have to add that in yeah in the, we're gonna get paid eventually yeah yeah one day <laughs> i'm but sure we don't have to i think josh has been thinking that for 30 years yeah, he's, so. he's still holding on to that dream we'll see <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah so i mean that's majority of how we get things done is through dues i mean the school gives us a good amount but not enough like i mean a hockey team yeah we're like, like 80 this year, grand to a hundred thousand dollars a year yeah, yeah at least and that's like not including this nationals trip, which is going to bump these numbers up a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, cause it's gotta be 25 grand to get, uh, yeah, uh, bare to minimum. get 20, 25 people yeah. to St. Louis housed feed, you know, like exactly. get a fed, and get it's, a, it's a week long. So like guys aren't working or anything. So, wow. The other thing is like, we luckily we'll probably have enough to like do team meals all the time, but normally it's kind of like you're on your own. Yeah. You know, you got to go get your own food and stuff. Like we'll get you there, but it's about it. It's as far as our dollars can go. So, well, you guys have come a long way from like we had to drive ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> we, we still do that in state, but at least luckily, yeah, when we're going like Colorado or something, we'll get a bus. What's the longest trip you guys did driving yourself? St. Louis. You oh, drove yourself my. to St. Louis? Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, yeah. yeah we we were luckily, like hurting thinking about taking a bus there. Luckily, yeah, we, were, I tried myself. we got team vans one year, but yeah, most of the time we had to uh, just Take jump in a car. And, but luckily, my wife had a new car when I met her. No. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> and so we hey, take, we a, take a, a new car. car. I had a 74 Volkswagen yeah. bus. I wasn't making it all the way to St. Louis. We should have put that in for the rest of the guys. Yeah. Find a girlfriend with a new car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Use your car. Make sure you marry somebody that gets a brand new car. Yep. <laughs> That'll be it. Be smart about it. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, cool. I really uh, I want to wish you guys the best of luck. Uh, you know, Thank now you. I know they're your rivals, but now we're also kind of pulling. We hope to see Utah State make it and i think sure. the u's trying to is, is you the made it now the yeah, u one there's their pack 10 or whatever so they get to yeah. go to nationals so as as a hockey guy here obviously i'm biased for we, for weber state <laughs> yeah, yeah but i'm still hoping that the other teams make it i'd love to see like can you imagine a national championship game and it's you and utah state yeah that'd be Oof. pretty insane how that'd intense cool. would that be that would be pretty intense. It'd be great for yeah. us. It might be some guys getting hurt a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Like, things are getting messy. Hey, for whatever probably. happens, happens. Yeah. But it'd be Big good. Rivalry. For, it'd be good to see for for yeah. as a Utah hockey fan. No, that would be awesome. It'd be amazing to see our two teams battle it out for the ACHA championship. Yep, we can or only three hold teams. Them. The U. Only I, I don't want to leave out the U. So <laughs> yeah, we'll, Weber has we'll to be see. one of them, and then Utah State and the U could figure it out yeah. between the other well, two. As long as they get through regionals, we'll see what happens. Yeah, in nationals, but. You know, they still got a tough road ahead of them. Yeah. Playing some good teams in regionals, so. Yeah, I'm pulling for them. I'm going to go we'll catch see. some of those games. I've, uh, I'm going to, I've got some uh, Utah women's hockey to go watch. They, they're they actually yeah. cool, cool. They're a fun team to watch this year. Yeah. They have some. Heard some good things. They've got some good hands. Man. It's yeah. pretty, <laughs> I mean, I was watching some some of them, like, try the Michigans and stuff. Like, it's, it's legit hockey now. So, yeah. they've got their regionals this weekend, too. So, there's a lot That's of really sweet. good hockey, uh, ACHA club hockey here. Uh, if you're yeah. one of the fans that's listening that's just tuning in because you're hearing about the NHL, go check out what's going on right now. You've got Weber State playing. You've got Utah State playing. You've got the University of Utah that's got two teams. Uh, they also have a women's team. Uh, UVU's got a program. I mean, you guys are just – it's awesome. It's awesome to see the growth that's 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 happened, and it's so cool to see Weber State just – being so good this year. Yeah. So it thanks for great. thanks for putting in 10 years and making it good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you're welcome. Yeah, it's, it's all me, man. All right. It's all me. And then you've been there for five years too, right? Yeah. I'm the reason it's good now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Weaver State, check them out. Yeah, you can check out their website. Uh, check out their Instagram page. Their link's in the bio. If you don't know what that means, that means you're my age. And, uh, <laughs> and all right. That is the Utah Puck Report. Oh, 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 o